Let us see what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ. Firstly, let's begin by addressing this doctrine of the Trinity that I spoke about in the beginning of this Bible study. Now, this is not the place for me to go into uh, uh, you know, great depth and detail about this doctrine, but I'm going to simply show you some verses which clearly teaches that the Godhead is made up of three persons and all three are equal in a sense. All right, let's begin with Matthew 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Right, this is again called in theological terms the baptismal formula. You don't have to call it that if it feels very odd to call it that, but you see this. He says, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Why does he place all three of them on the same plane? Why is it that, you know, he doesn't say... just the name of the Father or God, baptizing them in the name of God. Why doesn't he say that? He clearly gives you uh, all three persons of the Godhead, the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Not only did Jesus give you this, but even Paul. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. Now you begin with these simple verses which are very clear, which are not uh, obscure. And then you go on to the more difficult verses. First be rooted and grounded in the basics. So Matthew 28 and verse 19 is one of those. Look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 and <clears throat> verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Now, if anyone would argue and say, look, he gave the name of the Father first, that means he's the most important. And then comes the Son who is lesser than the Father. Paul begins with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ first. Right? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, he says, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. You see, it's not in order of importance. The Bible doesn't give it like that. They just name all three persons and all three persons together belong to the Godhead. All three persons belong to the Godhead. But, uh, let's look at another simple verse which we are all familiar with. If you are a King James Bible believer, then it's easy for you to understand this. Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, as you know, I'm sure, that 1 John 5, 7 is omitted from every Bible on the face of the earth except the King James Bible. And it says here that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the uh, the, yeah, the Holy Ghost and these three are one again you have all three persons of the Trinity mentioned there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one now the argument that is brought against this verse I'm not talking about manuscript evidence now we believe the King James Bible is perfect that there are absolutely no mistakes in it, right? So our authority for doctrine comes from this book. We don't believe God has preserved doctrines in various manuscripts and has given us the responsibility to learn 
these languages like Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and all their cognate uh, languages in order to find these doctrines. That is not a biblical way of thinking at all. God who inspired the scriptures preserved them perfectly without error and in these last days has given them to us in the universal language of the world which is English. The universal language of the last days is English and the King James Bible comes from Antioch the base for missionary activities for all the apostles. You'll read about it in the book of Acts. That's where Paul uh, started his ministry from, from Antioch of Syria, not Antioch of uh, Pisidia, which is somewhere in uh, Asia Minor, but Antioch of Syria. That was the base for the apostles after God moved from Jerusalem and started going to the Gentiles. So these manuscripts, which are the basis for the King James Bible, come from Antioch, whereas the, the manuscripts that, come, uh, uh, that, the, that form the basis for all the modern English versions and many other language Bibles come from Alexandria, Egypt, where they were corrupted by Oregon, right? And if you study the beliefs of Oregon, you'll be shocked. It's very difficult to believe that that man was saved if he had believed those doctrines before he got saved, right? Even about Jesus Christ, he's got these very weird doctrines and he tried his best to make the Bible prove his doctrine. So what did he do? He sat down and uh, engaged in textual criticism, right? He's called the father of textual criticism and uh, he... In, in simple words, he corrupted the scriptures and those corrupted scriptures became the basis for the Bible of the Roman Catholic Church and for all the Bibles uh, in the Protestant Church today uh, in the English language, starting with uh, the revised version of 1885. Then it went to America in 1901, you have the American Standard Version and then all the others came in. Right, the NIV, the RSV, the ESV, the uh, New King James Bible, all these things. So we believe in the King James Bible. So we are not going to, at this point, try to prove that 1 John 5, 7 belongs in the Bible because all those other versions have taken it out, saying that Erasmus, the man who uh, collated uh, all these manuscripts and, and you know came out with the Textus Receptus, inserted it without any textual basis or proof or evidence. So all that rubbish is what they say. But keeping all that aside, we believe God put it there as one of the most important verses on the Godhead, the Trinity. So there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost. Now these born again Christians who also believe the King James Bible, but do not believe in the deity of Christ like we do, but say that he's a created God, try to manipulate this verse. You know what they say? This is what they say. In verse 8 it says, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. You see that? There's a difference between verse 7 and verse 8, not only in the persons mentioned, Right, but also uh, in, in, in this, that in verse 7 it says, these three are one. In verse 8 it says, these three agree in one. So their argument is, 1 John 5, 7 also means these three agree in one. It is a unity in agreement, not unity in essence. That means... They are not one in the sense that they are all equal. They are one when it comes to agreeing about something. Their opinion is the same. Do you see how subtly the devil has deceived them into manipulating the words of God? It doesn't say that these three agree in one. It says these three are one. But in the next verse when it talks about the witness right that these three bear on earth because you see witness <clears throat> that three people are bearing either agrees with each other or, or, or it doesn't correct so 
There are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Their witness is the same. Their opinion is the same. But when it comes to the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, it's not about a witness. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, one in essence. That's what it means. And it agrees with these other verses. That they are all one, they are equal, that's why, you know, they are spoken of in the same breath. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Right, so that's the most simple teaching on the Trinity in the Bible, which also uh, tells you that Jesus Christ is none other than God. So that proves the deity of Christ. This is what the Bible teaches about the equality, equality of the three persons of the Godhead. The equality of the three persons of the Godhead. The Bible teaches that.